Chapter 7, Sampling Distributions. In future chapters, we'll be learning inferential statistics. Way back in chapter 1, we learned that inferential statistics is making conclusions about a population from a sample. So in those future chapters, we will use many samples. So rather than just taking a single sample, we'll take a lot of samples to make estimates about population proportions. So we'll talk about what this is, this chapter, and population means. To do this well, we need to learn the sampling distributions for these two new random variables. The sample proportion, we'll call it p hat, p with a little hat on it, and the sample mean x bar. So in this chapter, we'll get into what is the p hat and what is the sample mean. So 7-1, the mean and standard deviation of sample proportion, p hat. Many categorical variables you can think of only have two possible values, just like binomial. Um, so that could be a yes or a no, or a success or failure, and we'll use this to find proportions. So it will feel similar to binomial. The formulas will be better, but the idea will be similar to binomial. The type of data. So we'll use p when we're talking about a population, and p hat for a sample proportion. So just like we had x bar and mu, we're going to just have different letters so we know if we're talking about a population or a sample. And then how do I calculate p hat? So p hat will be x over n, where x is the number of data values with the desired attribute, or what we've been calling the number of successes in a sample size of n. So basically successes out of total. So let's look at an example of what a proportion is. So let's say we know that 42.1% of Americans approve of the job that the president is doing. So 42.1% is a population value because we're implying all Americans. So we call that P. P is 42.1, but we prefer decimal form, so 0.421. If we take a random sample of 614 Americans, so this is just a sample now, what percentage of the sample should we get, um, should we expect to approve of the job the president's doing? So what do we expect? We expect it to be near 42.1%. But the idea is, is that samples vary. So is it likely that our sample would get the exact value of the population? So would we get exactly 42.1? Probably not. So the idea is, is we're not going to get exactly 42.1% due to sampling error. But we should be close. And that's what this whole chapter will be about. So to answer how close, we'll focus on three questions to decide how close. And those things are, first, what's the mean of the proportions? What's the mean of the possible samples? What's the standard deviation, right? These are things that have been important to us. Oops, I wrote deviation twice. What is the standard deviation of the possible samples? And then what is the shape of the distribution? Because if we can get that normal shape, then we can find probabilities. Right? We like the normal curve because we know how to find area. So let's add a couple definitions before we get started in an example. So a parameter is a new word for us. A parameter is a quantity that describes a population value. So population values are things like mu for the population mean, sigma is a population standard deviation, 
and P is our new one for a proportion. And then statistics are what we kind of calculate in class. Those are things that come from samples. So a quantity that describes a sample value, usually with the goal of estimating a parameter, right? Estimating a population. So X bar is an example. That's our sample mean. Um, S is a sample standard deviation. And then our new one is P hat for our proportion. Two more definitions. Um, a point estimate is just a statistic calculated from a sample. And it's a point estimate of a parameter. So X bar, S, and P hat could all be a point estimate. We're just kind of generalizing it. And then finally, sampling error is the error result resulting from using a sample instead of a population. We never get the exact value, so there should be there's usually a little bit of error. And so that'll just be SE for sampling error, and it'll be the statistic minus the parameter. So if we're looking at proportions, that formula looks like our P hat minus P in an absolute value. We'll get into means later on in the chapter. And so our sample value or statistic is X bar minus mu inside an absolute value. So let's do a quick theorem and then we'll do an example. So our theorem tells us that if we take a random sample of size n from a population where the proportion of successes is p, so we're looking at proportions, um, then we can find the mean and standard deviation of p hat. So what's the average proportion we would get? What's the standard deviation? So on average, my p hats should be p, so my average is p. And my sigma is this formula, um, square root of p times q over n, or you could rewrite it as p times 1 minus p over n, all in a square root. So I think an example will make more sense of this. So according to a report by the Pew Research Center in October 2007, about 10% of the 3.1 million 18 to 24 year olds in the United States were enrolled in a community college. So 10% is my P, my proportion. Proportions are usually percents, so we just convert them to decimals. And this is a proportion from the population because we're talking about all of the 18 to 24 year olds. So P will be 0.10 or 0 0.10. And we're gonna take samples of size 100. We will randomly select 100 young adults in this age group. So my N will be 100. Part A, what is the probability that the sample proportion of young adults will be exactly equal to the population proportion of young adults? A lot of words, but it's basically asking us, what's the probability? Our sample gets exactly 10%. And so we learned earlier, exactly 10% is highly unlikely. So we're going to say approximately zero. The idea is, is it's not going to be exact, but it should be close. And so what do we expect for the sample proportion of young adults who attend community college? So we expect like, what do we expect to happen on average? We expect it to be near 10%, right? Not exactly, but near. And so that's why the average is equal to the proportion. So on average, we should get 10% or 0.10. Individual samples will vary, but on average, we should get 10%. And then standard deviation, we'll use the formula. 
So the formula for standard deviation was P times Q over N. And then we often just put the little P hat. Um, you'll see why that's important later. It just reminds us that we're talking about the proportions. So that's what that little subscript is. So sigma of P hat is square root of P Q over N. So P was 0.10. Q, we're not sure, and N was 100. And so Q is coming from the same idea as binomial. It'll be 1 minus P, so it'll be 0.90. So we get 0.10 times 0.90 all over 100, and then we'll square root that. And you can actually type everything at once. So 0.10 times 0.90, just make sure everything is inside the square root. And you should get 0.03. So that's my standard deviation. Cool, just a couple more parts and then I think this example helps explain all those definitions from the beginning. So expected error. Expected errors, what do we expect? So if we use the sample proportion as an estimate for the true population proportion, um, the expected error is given by EE or two standard deviations. So it should be within, I'm using a less than symbol for within, within two standard deviations. So this should sound familiar. Two has been a pretty common cutoff. And then we can also say 2 times the square root of PQ over N if you haven't calculated that standard deviation yet. So the expected error for this example will be within two standard deviations, so less than 2 sigma. So that would be 2 times 0.03 or 0.06. The idea is, is that it should be within 6 of 10%. So we said 10% was the average. So it's basically telling us it's plus or minus 6% from the expected 10%. So we might be over or under by six from that expected value. So 4% is possible because it's six under 10, but 2% seems a little too low. Um, if you've ever paid attention to election polls, you'll notice that plus or minus piece um, and that's what that's talking about. That's the expected error, how far off we might be. So I just have two more parts. Um, part E, if the sample contained 15 young adults who attend community college, what would our point estimate be? So point estimate is just a fancy way of saying is what is P hat? So P hat will be the number of successes or X over the total or n. So in this case, my success is going to community college. So 15 of them attend community college. And then my total, we were doing samples of size 100, so 100. So we have 100 young adults and then 15 of them went to community college. So my point estimate would be 0.15. And then finally, unusual. We've done unusual a lot. So what would the point estimate from part E be considered unusual? So I would just go back to z-score. We're doing a lot of the same stuff, we just kind of get there differently. So my data value is 0.15. My mean, we might have to look back, but it was 0.10. Sigma was 0.03, so we'll divide by 0.03. And I get a z-score of 0.1667. So it's not unusual because it's within two standard deviations. Another thing I notice is my sample value is 15%. Just 
to look at it from a different aspect. And we said the expected error was plus or minus 6% from 10. So that's basically saying 4% to 16%. So that's another reason why it's not unusual because it's within that expected error. So that's another thing you could look at as well. But z-score is probably what we're more used to. So hopefully these examples helped explain the definitions. I think the definitions alone might have not made sense, um, but I hope this example explained them. Let me know if you have any questions.